This program is funded in part by Mass Humanities. These men, these men from the sea I know, they're following this story of a great American adventure. They may not be a top-notch Hollywood filmmaker or even have a dozen PhDs, but they have an inside track. See, the man at the center of this story came from right next door to them. They grew up on the same waters, they're even distantly related, and they know him. They have the same itch for adventure. So we follow Kendrick from his very beginnings because we say, why would you pick this person to come in when you've got a whole harbor full of privateers. John Kendrick was born in the town of Harwich, based on whatever records we have. No one knows precisely where. So we follow him growing up on Pleasant Bay and what is now South Orleans, okay. East Harwich. We pull it through what his experiences he would get growing up on those waters, which we're both familiar with. Right? Which are the most treacherous waters on yeah. all the East Coast, perhaps. Hmm. You know, graveyard of the Atlantic. I think one of the things that you learn about Pleasant Bay pre-power was that you could take advantage of the wind, the tides, and of course occasionally brute force muscle as you ended up rowing home. Edward Kendrick came here in 1693 from England via Portsmouth, New Hampshire. He married a Mayflower descendant and set up a store here near the head of Pleasant Bay. There was a Native American uh, tribe a meeting house right nearby, stones throw away. this little general store that his grandfather had was a real nexus uh, of people and so he would have had experience with Native Americans, African Americans, uh, trade. If by the age of 20 John was crewing a uh, whaler off of Newfoundland, two years later he got his first military experience with a local militia company and uh, at the French and Indian War, but being away from the sea only lasted about eight months. Yeah. Oh, it made you want to have a cup of coffee. No, no, it was, it was just, it was just because the the sound from the coffee thing. Since you were you were talking and then you turned the coffee thing on, it was you couldn't very hear what loud. you were saying because the sound was competing <laughs> with your voice. And your it, voice it was funny because Matt and Kane were saying it's great. You can hear that. I was like, okay. <laughs> but to be able to make his way further, uh, as in the as a navigator, as a someone in the marine trades, he has to get out of Pleasant Bay. And that's been a nagging concern. No one knows actually when or where Kendrick lived on Martha's Vineyard. We're going to the vineyard? Yeah, courthouse. We're taking a video camera into a courthouse? Yeah. Can we do that? No. <laughs> We're cool. Oh, yep. he's here. K is for Kendrick. So, Kendrick bought a piece of property April 23rd, 1776. Is that right? Book 10, page 175. Book 10. 1772. Enoch Coffin. Register. Quill and Ink Records. We have our description. We have our heading. <laughs> yeah. John Kendrick, hold it, Kendrick. Put it yeah. It's the same house. <laughs> Extending towards the harbor. So this is the property they sold. And they moved in 1777. Nobody's ever known when they actually left the vineyard, but we just just, we just got it right here. Got the property that Kendrick bought when he sold it. We'll take it to the museum. Have some fun. 
What do you think might have brought somebody here from the Cape? What would have been a draw? Um, well, I think Edward Town was a big port. Again, if you were a mariner, this was a, a big, you know, pretty significant place to be. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's why it was probably the fifth largest whale port at that time, because it had some pretty good harbor. Uh, deep, unlike Nantucket, which is very shallow. And I don't know about right. Orleans Harbor. Well, Orleans is nothing. Um, <laughs> and probably at that point, the you know, whaling was pretty lucrative. Mark Hendrick was um, uh, said to so, command merchant you know, ships or whale ships, ships out of here. Were there any <laughs> whalers at that time? I think that around that time, I think there were, might have been oh, around 16 time. whale ships that left from here. Okay, um, I think uh, the vineyard was probably the fifth largest All right, uh, yeah, whale port. So what's the date on this? This is... Um, Beautiful. I love where they draw on the seal yeah, instead of exactly. taking the real thing off. Let's find Kendrick's house. This would have... Yeah, that would have been the courthouse right there. Check it out. Court house. Across the street would have been the jail. Jail yard, but right here would have been Kendrick's house. As soon as he gets back during the war, he goes right back to privateering again. Why did you come to where I am? Yeah. The um, transportation was beginning, beginning to come in from Boston to New Bedford and all the alien whaling industries are beginning, and all that transportation attracted him. He could see it on the islands. He, he was, uh, I think, just driven by wanting to do something great. John Kendrick, with the proceeds from uh, his privateering, bought a house that had been uh, built about the same year that he was born. This house is pretty much kept the way that Kendrick uh, had it when he left. This one, I can tell you that this is what is referred to as a good morning, good morning staircase. staircase. Why do they refer to it as that? Two bedrooms. Okay. They both leave in the morning and they say good morning to each other and come down the stairs. Uh. I've always thought of Kendrick as the person that I know in local history anyway that I'd like to invite to dinner because he, he was a, supposed to be a, a fabulous conversationalist and loved to tell stories and I'd love to hear the stories. And I just think he's, he's a great seat of the pants uh, uh, sailor and commander, and I just think it would be great to have him here at the dinner table talking about his, and I, even now, of course, it would be 200 years later, it really would be exciting, but even then, I think he would be a, a, great, a, great, uh, a great capture for your uh, Sunday evening uh, repast. The government gave them the right to be a pirate. And everything they took from the other ships, including the men and the crew, were theirs. What did he say? Thornton gives, says it better than anybody else, what a privateer was. They were pirates licensed by the government. He was quite a person. So many men were soon forgotten. You know, these boys of ours, they're doing a real service. That gentleman, Thornton Gibbs, gave them a half hour interview and told them everything about that house and more. He was a real treasure, but he passed away a couple of months later. And you can't say our boys aren't historians now. They're not just having fun. They are doing something important. They are saving history. I got millions of fans just watching how I flip this game. And when I'm walking down the street, I can hear you all screaming my name. I make the boys say, hey.